Okay, so you should have your paper set up like this. Again, consult the photograph if you need help with that. For this uh, assignment, you're going to need two colors and black and white. So I'm doing blue and yellow because they are complementary and sometimes uh, you want to make sure that you're getting the best colors when they blend together. Okay? And black. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use blue for a lot of this. So the first one is light pressure. So look how I'm holding the pencil, okay? I'm like halfway back. I'm also coloring on the side. I'm not holding this up like I was going to write my name. I'm coloring on the side of the pencil. All right, this goes for all shading. It gives you more surface area to work on. Um, and having to loosen your grip on the pencil makes you use lighter pressure. Okay, so you're just going to fill in that box evenly and lightly. All right, so we're, this is really a, like a sketching hold, like a gesture hold. We're, we'll cover that a little bit more later. Now, the opposite is heavy pressure, okay? And so you can do a lot of things just by varying how hard or how l lightly you press on the paper. Sorry, my paper is a little bit bigger than my clipboard here. You can also always go back over and layer. If you're not totally perfectly coloring in the box, it's fine. I'm not grading on the box, whether you stay in the lines for this. So you can see what a difference that is between those two pencils and all it was was pressure. So now over here in grade eight, you're gonna start drawing heavily like you did in the heavy pressure, but you're gonna lighten your pressure as you go and try to evenly get lighter and lighter and lighter on the other side, okay? Again, if your first go around does not look even to you, you can always go back over it. Just know you're adding a little bit more color. I am barely, I'm like tickling the paper. I don't really like that description, <laughs> but that's what I'm doing. I am basically tickling the paper when I get over here on the light side. That's how light my pressure is, okay? So, now we're going to do a little technique called burnishing. And you can do this a couple of ways. How we're going to learn how to do it is with an eraser. Um, so again, we're going to do a gradation of um, darker to light. Now, with your pencil eraser, you're actually going to go back over your color pencil, and it may lift some of it, but it's actually going to even out your blending. There's a couple of ways to burnish, like I said before. One of them is to use a colorless blender. We do not have those in class, so we're not going to learn that this time. But if you are buying supplies, because you're like, hey, color pencils are awesome, uh, you may want to pick up a colorless blender. Prismacolor makes one. The best one is made by a company called Karandash. They are Swedish. Uh, but you, I don't know if they sell them at like regular, like what Michaels. You might have to go online to find that these days. But you can always 
you feel like that lightened your gradation up too much, you can just do what I just did and go back over with another light layer and blend it in. Okay, so this is something you could play with. So it smooths out some of your pencil work. Okay. All right, burnish. So now we have hatching. Now you should remember hatching from when we did our value scales back at the beginning of the year. Hatching is going in one direction and making lots of straight lines right next to each other, all going in the same direction. They could go up and down, they could go the other way, um, but they all go the same direction. Now if you go back and you want to make them darker, you would just add more lines. So this works great for pencil, this works great for color pencil, it works great for pen. Hatching can be your friend. Okay. So all I'm doing is lots of lines right next to each other and eventually it starts to blend together. Now we've got cross hatching. So we're going to do this where our lines are all going one direction. And then we're going to cross by going in the opposite direction, basically making tons of X's. Whoa, this is a weird exercise to do through the camera. Okay. Again, if you want to make it darker, you got to go back and add more lines. I think it's one of those soothing activities. Okay, but you can get good texture. So you can see how these would be good for like hatching, cross hatching are really good for like clothing and hair and fabric, uh, feathers, natural textures. Now we're gonna layer. So I'm gonna take my blue and I'm gonna do about like half the box, okay? And I'm going to color with blue. So whatever you're layering, whatever you're doing, it's good to go in the same direction so that all of your pencil work is all even. Sometimes if your hatch if your shading doesn't look even, sometimes you can go over it the opposite direction very lightly and it will smooth out any of your directional marks, especially if you don't want them there, depending on what you're drawing. Okay. So now I'm going to take my yellow, oh, finally using a different color here. And draw a line there. And now I'm going to shade just like I did with the blue, but now I'm shading with yellow. Okay. And it gives you a green with a green that I think is a much more natural looking green than the green that comes with the color pencil sets. Not to say that you can't use those, just that there's a lot of power in blending your own colors together. They tend to look a little more rich, a little more real. Same goes for paint. So if you ever get into painting, mixing is better. All right, so now We're going to grade eight with light pressure. And then in heavy pressure, and then we're gonna go with black and white. So what's the difference here is that we're gonna blend two colors together. 
So I'm going to start over here with my light pressure, and I'm just going from the left to the right. Okay. And then I'm going to take good old yellow and do the same thing. Starting darker on that starting side and then blending and getting lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter over here. Voila! Alright, now we're going to try it with heavy pressure. I'm going to find I don't use heavy pressure a lot, but there are times that call for it. Sharpen this pencil. It's starting to give me scratchies. You see that? That means I've gotten to the wood. All right. So the thing is, is you do want to have sharp pencils, but you don't want to be too sharp because if they're too pointy on the end, they're just going to scratch the paper instead of blending. But now I've gotten to the point where I need to sharpen that pencil. Okay. So that one didn't blend as well. Thanks to that happening. See those scratch marks? Those are from the wood of the casing of the pencil. So for time, I'm going to use trusty red for this one. All right. So we're going to do grade eight plus white on this. So that just means that on this side, we're going to do red, fade it out here to white. And then we're going to start with white and go out this way. Okay. Now this is good for any of those pink, lighter tones you might want to make. It also blends your colors, so whatever you're using, uh, whether that's red or blue or yellow, it's going to lighten them up a little bit and it's going to help blend in your work. Okay. So you see you can get some nice pinks. So you can do a lot with very little. And again, layers. You're going to be doing a lot of layering in this project. So if you ever feel like you uh, didn't get it even enough, you can always go back over it. And lastly, we're going to do black. And the difference with black is that we're going to start on this side with the black and then come over with this side uh, with the color. Okay? So give yourself a... When I say grade 8, it's basically the same thing, a value scale, because we want to get, you know, we want to go from darkest dark over here and basically get to very pale or white. Okay. And we'll use trusty yellow again. So again, I'm starting with more pressure on this side. And fading it in the air. So that would be a way to tint or shade your colors. I am not a big fan of using black. I don't use it that often. Um, it's very harsh if you're doing natural images like portrait. So, I mean, unless somebody has like dark hair or there's dark fur, um, but you actually get a much more natural color by blending like a, a variety of shades together. So we'll use black pretty sparingly. But you can kind of see how like you can create a darker tone in here. And that is our demo on techniques. So I hope your takeaway from this is that you're going to be doing a lot of layering. <laughs> whatever it is you're using. <laughs> Thanks guys.